That's a strictly Jeremy thing. Jeremy only. Jeremy exclusive. He went from 45% to 75%. And that's why it's for Jeremy. <laughs> that's why it's for Jeremy. Julian is talking about Jeremy's one-handed free throw shooting technique that he's pretty good at on Spurs game day. Looking to snap a four-game losing streak, Victor Wimbanyama and the San Antonio Spurs will host the Utah Jazz tonight, the first of three regular season meetings between the two Western Conference clubs. And at last check, Wimby was upgraded to available as he deals with a right ankle sprain that he suffered Saturday night in Dallas during pregame when he stepped on the foot of a ball boy. Now he sat out against the Mavs and Pop said he wasn't happy about it, so you know Wimby wants to go tonight. And this is Wimby this morning at shoot-around going through some flexibility drills. Julian Champ. Penny was asked about that incident and the fact that the baseline is crowded with staffers and others during warmups. Obviously, it's unfortunate. You know, we, we need the big guy and we don't want him hurt, especially not off a rolled ankle on a warmup. Um, so it's definitely unfortunate. I think the sound has got to be you know, cleaned up, but it's kind of it's kind of hard because we need rebounders when we're warming up and stuff. So stuff like that happens, unfortunately. Um, I want to know one's to blame, but it's just unfortunate. And the Utah Jazz come to town as winners of two straight, beating Detroit first, and then Toronto 126-119 Saturday night. Wagner great Jordan Clarkson scored 16 of his 30 points against the Raptors in the fourth quarter. He's second on the Jazz this season, averaging 17.3 points per game. The Spurs have four games left in 2023 and would love to end the year on a high note with some dubs, and it starts tonight with Utah. Case at 12 Sports, Mary Rominger has more. Hey Larry, well the end of 2023 is near and at this morning's shoot around we checked in with Spurs forward Julian Champagny who just moved into the starting lineup to see where he feels the team is at at this point in the season and what the focus is moving forward. I think the goal will stay the same. It's just like, you know, we want to lock in defensively, we want to become a, a, a more aggressive team, a more physical team. Obviously we're still young and that only takes time to change, um, but I feel like the things that we can't control are our physicality, our defensive mindset, our execution. So I think those things kind of stay in their place and us wanting to get better, those, better, better at those every game. And tonight against Utah, Champagny added that that defense first mindset will be important to handle all of the size that the Jazz come in with. From the Spurs practice facility, Mary Rominger, KSAT 12 Sports. Larry, back to you. Thank you, Mary. Tip is tonight at 7 at the Frost Bank Center. It was both business and pleasure today for the Arizona Wildcats and the Oklahoma Sooners as players and coaches from both teams met with the media this afternoon ahead of the 2023 Valero Alamo Bowl. Arizona spoke at 2.30, followed by OU at 3.30, and then it was time to have some fun. It's the Rico's River Rally at the Arneson River Theater, a one-of-a-kind pep rally involving fans, cheerleaders, players, coaches, and the bands from both schools, Arizona and Oklahoma, and it is always a good time. And going down right now in the Serve Pro Bowl between Texas State and Rice, that game is all tied at 21 late in the second quarter. More on the night beat. Ooh, thrilling. All yeah. right, thank you, Larry. We'll see you after the break. What better way to ring in the new year than to ring out a collection of the year's oddest, wildest, and quirkiest viral and trending videos? Jeremy Roth has the year in review and take a look at 2023. Another year, another wrap of the weirdest, wild, wacky, witty, and wondrous stories wielding the who, what, when, where, and why of the worthiest world, what not, worth the wait, but leaving watchers whipped, warned, wigged out, worse for wear, and walking on air. <sighs> Let's take a look at 2023. A podcast became a pod crash when a pair of Houston show hosts had their spotlight suddenly stolen by an unscripted car crash. Holy sh**. Well put. Luckily, the pair escaped unscathed and with plenty to talk about on their next show. Security video from Canada caught a pair of thieves taking a shortcut in a stolen car through a closed mall. It was like a scene from the Blues Brothers, but with significantly less singing and dancing. Police said the suspects ripped off even more stuff inside the mall. Arrests were later made in connection with the after hours shopping spree. A North Carolina driver landed in hot water after heart stopping dash cam video showed him nearly hitting a pair of school bus riders. <laughs> Uh, that was the bus driver's understandable freakout. Thankfully, the kids were okay, and the police arrested the driver who they said already had 
a suspended license. Nice. Speaking of unfit drivers, Slovakian authorities were doggone dumbfounded, going viral with a now legendary traffic cam still of a dog captured behind the wheel of a speeding car. The driver told police the dog had jumped in his lap against his wishes. The dog didn't tell anyone anything. He's a dog. Animals out of their element can be intimidating and give you pause. Case in point, viral video from Australia showed a man square up against an absolutely jacked kangaroo. I'm gonna punch your head in. The ripped roo had the man's dog in its clutches, but didn't know this guy was a martial arts expert who wasn't afraid to dole out uppercuts down under. This Australian windsurfer was left with a whale of a tale to tell after he got nailed by a breaching behemoth. The man was pulled underwater by his safety strap, but luckily it snapped, allowing him to resurface stunned, but no worse for wear. There was no shortage of surreal science stories to share this year, like this weird question mark spotted in space. Spoiler alert, it's just an oddly shaped galaxy. And this donut shaped rock found on Mars. Spoiler alert, it's just a rock. It looks like a donut. But when the brainiacs of air and space aren't solving intergalactic mysteries, they're apparently designing cutting edge paper planes to break a world distance record. That's what a pair of young Boeing engineers did along with a friend flinging their precisely packed paper projectile a staggering 290 feet and into the record books. There were a few whoopsie daisies, like a cattle car of cows that inexplicably started dropping one by one onto a busy North Carolina road. The heifers were okay, but did force drivers to move over in a high stakes game of chicken. Or like this marathon runner in Atlanta left kicking herself after making a wrong turn in the home stretch of a race she was leading 50 feet from the finish line. She still finished third, but the mistake cost her thousands in winnings. Or the Boston cop who went viral after taking a tumble down a city park slide and tumble may be underselling. <laughs> the officer received minor injuries and the wild ride drew enough attention, the mayor's office vowed to look into the safety of the slide, but by then social media had already done what it does so well. There was also far too much of the weird and wild, like teeny tiny designer handbags, dancing dinos by the thousands, ultra low lowriders riding real low, marijuana laced high tides, dueling fat bears, definitely not fake bears, we swear, flightless eagles, fathering rocks, sloth bombed rocket launchers, gargantuan golden retriever get togethers, and so forth. But my favorite feel good story of the year had to be George of the Jumbotron. A four year old hockey spectator became a legend in an instant when a Jumbotron operator kept zeroing in on him at his first ever Detroit Red Wings match, and the crowd couldn't get enough, delivering ever-growing cheers for little George, but jeers for anyone else. It was win-win. The team got itself an adorable new mascot, and a kid was crowned a king. For Take a Look at 2023, I'm Jeremy Roth. What a rock star. Well, after the break, an intense winter storm hitting the plains as millions of people travel back home following the holidays. A look at those storms and if they're causing any travel troubles next. The numbers are rising for young onset dementia. Although early dementia is thought to be dictated by genetics, new research has indicated that lifestyle also plays a role. Young onset dementia means the cognitive decline that one experiences years before signs of dementia sets in. For some, that can be as early as the age of 30. A study released Tuesday by JAMA Neuro Neurology found that some of the more surprising risk factors are social isolation, hearing loss, and low vitamin D. A person's socioeconomic status and ability to obtain higher education also seem to be a factor. You may have to pay to return those gifts you don't want. According to the logistics company Happy Returns, more than 80% of merchants are now charging a fee for at least some returns. Macy's, Abercrombie, J. Crew, and H&M have all added shipping fees for mail-in returns. Amazon has also started charging $1 to return items to UPS stores. One reason companies charge fees is because it hurts their profitability. They have to cover the cost of shipping fees and then have to mark down the return goods to sell them. Now to the holiday travel rush, millions of Americans returning home or heading to their New Year's Eve destinations, along with dealing with some dangerous weather. So far, it seems things are pretty smooth as a major storm moves across the country. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. 
Heavy snow pummeling parts of America's heartland. Authorities shutting down a portion of this highway near Elizabeth, Colorado, the area under a blizzard warning until Wednesday morning. And from Denver to the Kansas border, I-70 eastbound closed for a time, drivers being diverted off the interstate. People trying to navigate the slick, snow-covered roads. Similar scenes in Nebraska where drivers have been facing whiteout conditions. Parts of I-80 closed after a big pileup. The dangerous weather right in the middle of the holiday travel rush. The same system now heading east. Many are already dealing with dense fog in New York and Boston. Haunting morning fog also delaying some passengers in Manchester, New Hampshire. And I got another text on the way to the airport. My flight on December 26th from Manchester now departs at 11.07, but now I think it's actually delayed even more. Meanwhile, in Atlanta, some passengers tell us they waited over an hour and a half in the security line. So I think we're going to wait probably twice as long as our flight. Our flight is two hours, but we're already an hour and a half in. This is how long we've been standing in line. Yeah, we're this still in the overflow the area. Yeah. But overall, things have been pretty smooth so far, delays and cancellations limited. And this holiday travel season keeps breaking records. The TSA says on Friday alone, it screened 2.7 million passengers. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Yep, while some may be here in our neck of the woods, we're a little disappointed that we didn't necessarily see a white Christmas in San Antonio. At least we didn't have really any travel issues. We did have a round of rain and storms that moved through early Christmas Eve. Sunday morning, but then after that cleared, low humidity and plenty of sunshine returned for Christmas Day. All right, take a look at your weather headlines. Quiet weather pattern continues this week. Cold mornings in the 30s daily, leading in comfortable afternoons in the 60s. We'll talk about that, plus the low humidity, and also get you a look at your sky gazing forecast. Something cool happening in the sky this evening. Those details after the break. All right, me. I know everyone wanted a white Christmas. We didn't get that. It was cold. <laughs> yep. Is it going to stay like that? So the mornings are still going to be very cold over the next several days. We're talking daily upper 30s expected here in San Antonio, a little bit lower up into the hill country. So yeah, you're going to want the code in the mornings, but then into the afternoons, very pleasant with highs in the 60s and plenty of sunshine. Unfortunately, no notable rain chances to talk about, but in terms of comfortable weather, it's going to be pretty nice, especially as we get ready to wrap up 2023. All right, take a look at this KSAT Connect photo that was sent in last night. We actually had a lot of variations of this photo sent in to KSAT Connect. This is a halo around the moon and similar to what we see sometimes when we have to deal with the sunlight, the moonlight here passing through a thin deck of high clouds, cirrus clouds. And those cirrus clouds are made up of ice crystals that refract that moonlight and create this beautiful, perfect halo around the moon. So thank you all for sending in those KSAT Connect photos. I wanted to mention the moon because this evening, actually right now, the moon has already risen above the northeastern horizon. If you go out and you look out your window, you'll see it. It's big and bright. This is the full cold moon. It has now officially become full as of about 633. So 12 minutes ago, our last full moon for this year. And you definitely can see it. We still do have a few high clouds out there, but mostly clear skies expected later on tonight. Low 50s. It's going to be chilly as well. If you are stepping out for any evening plans or just to go look at the moon, low 50s by 7 and then transitioning to the 40s later on this evening. 56 degrees right now, though, here in San Antonio. So let, yes, already starting to see a little bit of a chill out there. Dew points in the 40s. So there's that dry air that is very much in place. 51 already in Pleasanton. It's 53 in Hondo, 59 out west in Del Rio, upper 40s across portions of the hill country, Kerrville, Rock Springs, even Fredericksburg, all sitting at 48 degrees this hour. As we continue to see that cooler and drier air, stick with us through the overnight. It is going to be another cold start first thing Wednesday. Upper 30s, low 40s expected for most of us. Again, a few localized spots up into the hill country may briefly dip down to that 32 degree threshold just before the sun comes up. We will stay well above that here in the Alamo City. 41 in Catula, 39 in Carrizo Springs. First thing tomorrow, 39 as well out east in Gonzales. And as we were talking about a bit earlier, 
Once we do see the sun come up, we are going to see plenty of it throughout the day. 57 degrees at 11 a.m., 61 degrees by 1 o'clock. There's all of that sunshine even into the afternoon. We've got a forecast high pointed around 64 here in town. A little bit warmer the farther south that you go along and just south of the Highway 90 corridor. I think some mid to upper 60s, maybe even a few low 70s. Certainly possible and a little bit cooler up into the hill country. 60 degrees tomorrow in Kerrville. 50 over in Rock Springs and in terms of those daily afternoon highs, upper 50s, low 60s varying by a couple of degrees each day, a little bit warmer by the second half of the upcoming weekend for your New Year's Eve. But then we see another front push through early next week, and that's going to allow for another batch of cooler and drier air to work in there as well. Pretty quiet, though, all things considered. No notable rain chances to talk about. Also, as we had mentioned a little bit earlier, where that is a different story right now. This area of low pressure across the central plains sparking some rain. And yes, even some snow near Omaha, Nebraska, stretching over to portions of the Rockies as well. Denver, Casper, even some rain along the eastern seaboard all attached to that low pressure system. Take a look at temperatures up that way. It is 31 right now in Omaha, 32 in Bismarck, North Dakota. For us here in South Central Texas, again, we're sitting in the 50s. That area of low pressure that's sparking all of that activity very slow to work eastward throughout the back half of the week, but it finally does so. We're just pretty quiet on the back side of that low pressure system, but then we see another area of low pressure dig into the Midwest and the Great Lakes region early next week, and that essentially is what's going to allow for that second front to then move in as we get ready to kickstart 2024. But we still have the low humidity in place. Not much dry, not much moisture to work with. So you can see with that drier air, it's just pretty dry for us here in San Antonio. So you can expect plenty of sunshine, cold mornings, mid to upper 30. So you will want the coat in the morning, but then into the afternoon, very pleasant. Somewhere on the cool side, upper 50s, low 60s, and that'll continue all the way into next week, Daniela. All right, a chilly start to the year. Thank you, Mia. We'll see you right after the break. For more than 60 years, the Tejano legend Little Joe has been on the road and entertaining crowds all over the world. This year, he was the recipient of a prestigious national award in Washington, D.C. He recently sat down with our Erica Hernandez to talk about that honor and if he has any plans on slowing down. From farm working as a child to traveling the world as a musician, Little Joe Hernandez has a career many would envy. He has been in the music industry for 62 years. He has recorded more than 70 albums won four Grammys, won Latin Grammy, been named Texas Artist of the Year in 2019, but recently he calls his latest award, the National Heritage Fellowship Award from the National Endowment for the Arts, the biggest one yet. This was really uh, something, a big plus to my life, really, to my career. In September, Little Joe went to Washington, D.C. to accept the award. We're still working on finishing all the, that, that, that uh, comes with getting the award. Um, I feel closure. I, I, because that's the highest recognition you can get for the arts, for what I do, for the music I do. Now 83 years old, he says he and his group La Familia have slowed down a bit, but they aren't going anywhere. I love people. I, I just love people. And that's felt from the audience, that energy and that love. It's just amazing, it's magic. And- um, Everyone is a part of your familia. Very much so. After so many years performing, he says he now sees several generations of the same family coming back to his shows. When I was in my 20s, uh, couples would bring their children for me to take pictures with. And those children now are grandparents or great grandparents in some cases. You know, they're, they're in their 70s, they're, they're, you know, it's just amazing. Looking back at it all, Little Joe says he never expected his career to have lasted this long and feels lucky to still be able to grace the stage. Music is it's about the soul, la alma de uno. And if you can convey that to the listener, you know, that's, that's what it's about. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. 
All right, cold mornings continue over the next several days. Very pleasant afternoons with low humidity and sunshine. Upper 60s by Sunday, though, then another front works in cooler and drier air to kick off the new year, Daniela. Well, that's it for us at 6. Join us tonight at 10 for the night.